trip coming up close soon, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, could y'all please come to order? <clears throat> Boy, that was a quick response. Maybe I missed my calling. <laughs> Should have been a teacher. Uh, this is the uh, regularly scheduled meeting for the school board. Uh, the time is about 12 minutes after 7, so we're a little bit late getting started. Um, as you know, I am not a member of the school board. I'm just the city attorney, but... Uh, it is the organizational meeting, the annual organizational meeting of the school board. And seeing how as no one else was taking charge to get the meeting started, I thought I would jump in until somebody told me I couldn't. <laughs> Since I'm the legal authority, uh, I'll just say that I can. So what we're going to do at this point, ladies and gentlemen, is, is open the meeting. Um, and I'm not really used to doing this. Uh, but I think our standard procedure is to start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Is that correct? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to ask everyone to please uh, check your phones and make sure you've either cut them off or put them in vibrate mode so that we don't get disturbed during the middle of the meeting. Uh, for the folks up here at the dais, um, from city council meetings, I have recognized that when you have your cell phones up here around these microphones, we get feedback. Mm -hmm. So I ask you to either pull them away or make sure you've got them cut off so that we don't get disturbed by the feedback. Uh, and I think the... So the first thing we need to do is the uh, motion for the meeting certification. So uh, does someone have a copy of the motion for the meeting certification? Whereas the Franklin City School Board has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and whereas section 2.2-3712D of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the school board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now therefore be it resolved that the Franklin City School Board hereby certifies to the best of each member's knowledge one only published business matters lawfully exempted by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification applies and two, only such business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Second. All right, you have a motion um, for certification and a second. Uh, does anyone have any discussion? If not, could we please have a vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Uh, and so the next, uh, let's see, I guess the next matter we're going to entertain will be the motions from closed session, please. Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve the personnel recommendations as presented. 
second. Okay, you've heard a motion to approve the personnel agenda as recommended by the superintendent. Uh, does anyone have any discussion concerning that document? <clears throat> okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, so that motion has passed. Uh, let's see, I think we need to do a roll call. I don't think we have caught that yet. Excuse so, me, I believe we have another motion from closed session. All right, Dr. Hall Leonard, what would that be? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the 2017-2018 student liaison person that was recommended by the superintendent, that student that was recommended by the superintendent. All right, uh, do we have a second to that motion? Second. Okay, is there any discussion about that motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <clears throat> Okay, I would ask that um, the person selected uh, be notified by, I guess, the school division and, and make arrangements for that person to be present in the future. Yes, sir. I don't, is the person here tonight? Does anyone know? I'm sorry, I don't know the person. No, he's not here this evening. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So then can we do the roll call, please? Amy Phillips. Present. Marshall Williams. Present. Ron Eastman. Present. Robert Holt. Present. Dr. Hall Leonard. Present. Rebecca Jessup. Present. Jessica Green. Present. All right, so we have a full board. All right, the, uh, this meeting is also, as I was indicating from the beginning, I guess, is the organizational uh, meeting for the uh, school division. Um, and I think the first order of business will be to uh, elect a chairperson. Uh, then the second order of business will be to allow the uh, city attorney to return to his normal duties and the chairperson to take over. Uh, so I'll open the floor for nominations for chairman of the 1718 uh, <clears throat> school board. Do I have a nomination? Mr. Williams, I would like to nominate Robert Holt to serve as chair for the 2017-2018 school year. <clears throat> okay. Are there any other nominations? I'll make one more offer. Are there any other nominations for chairman of the school board? Seeing how as there are no other nominations, I'll uh, close nominations. I'll ask if city council want, excuse me, my fault. I'll ask if the school board uh, will <coughs> elect Mr. Holt by acclamation. Uh, so all those in favor of selecting Mr. Holt by acclamation, please make it known by saying aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Holt, I return <clears throat> the meeting to you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, are there nominations for vice chairman? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Dr. Andrea Hall Leonard for the position of vice chair. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to appoint Dr. Hall Leonard as vice chairman signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. Organizational plan, there are a number of committees that we need to look at. I think you have a copy in front of you. Uh, we have the copies for the people that served in 2000, <clears throat> excuse me, 16, 17. We just elected a chair, vice chair, regular meeting the third Thursday of each month at 7 p.m. Clerk of the board, we have Pamela Kendry. I'd like to offer a change that we appoint our new clerk, Ms. Tammy Moore, to that position. Deputy Clerk, Gail Wade, agent for the school board, Ms. Sterling, superintendent's designee, Kelvin Edwards. Designate to sign documents in the absence of the superintendent, Kelvin Edwards. 
designate designee to sign vouchers in the absence of the superintendent, Kelvin Edwards, representative to CSEP, Robert Holt, representative to the Governor's School for the Arts, Dr. <coughs> Hall Leonard, representative to the Appomattox Regional Governor's School, Robert Holt, representative to Hampton Roads Educational Technology, Tech, Telecommunications Association, Dr. Hall Leonard, Voting delegate to VSBA, Robert Holt, on page two. Alternate voting delegate to VSBA, Dr. Hall Leonard. School board representatives to the Pupil Personnel Committee, Jessica Grant and Dr. Hall Leonard. School board representatives to Buildings and Grinds Committee, Ron Rusnak and Dr. Hall Leonard, school board representative to the Personnel and Finance Committee, Robert Holt and Rebecca Jester, Student Discipline Committee, Marshall Williams, Amy Phelps, and Dr. Hall Leonard, alternate, Jessica Grant. Franklin Southampton Early Childhood Council, Smart Beginnings, Dr. Hall Leonard, Technology Advisory, Jessica Grant. Gifted Advisory, Robert Holt and Dr. Hall Leonard. Bright Starts Advisory, Ron Rusnak. Career and Technology Advisory, Rebecca Jester. Special <coughs> Education Advisory, Dr. Hall Leonard. And Health Advisory, Robert Holt. Are there other comments? Does this list include the ones that were added today? Yes, it does. Okay. Did you find it or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just had a clarifying question about building new grounds committee. Last year, I believe it was Amy Phillips that was on that committee. It is. That, yeah, it is. Okay. okay. Okay, so we want to make that correction. It's not Dr. Hall Leonard there, it's Ms. Phillips. Am I correct, Ms. Phillips? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> it looks like we're intact except for Clerk of the Board, Tammy Moore, and that change with mm -hmm. Dr. Hall Leonard and Amy Phillips. Do I have a motion? Make a motion that we approve the organizational plan of the school board as presented with the changes noted. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. VSBA Code of Conduct. Um, every July we look at this. There are 12 points. Each member of the board certifies that we agree to follow the Code of Conduct, and I'll briefly read those. I believe we all read. I think it's on. Mm -hmm. We all read. I will have integrity in all matters and support the full development of all children and the welfare of the community, commonwealth, and nation. I will attend scheduled board meetings. I will come to board meetings informed concerning the issues under consideration. I will make policy decisions based on the available facts and appropriate public input. I will delegate authority for the administration of the schools to the superintendent and establish a process for accountability of administrators. I will encourage individual board members expression of opinion and establish an open two-way communication process with all segments of the community. I will communicate in accordance with the board policies, public reaction and opinion regarding board policies and school programs to the full board and superintendent. <coughs> 
I will bring about desired changes through legal and ethical procedures upholding and enforcing all laws, state regulations, and court orders pertaining to schools. I will refrain from using the board position for personal or partisan gain and avoid any conflict of interest or appearance of impropriety. I will respect the confidentiality of privileged information and make no individual decisions or comments commitments that might compromise the board or administration. I will be informed about current educational issues through individual study and participation in appropriate programs, such as those sponsored by my state and national school boards association. And finally, I will always remember that the foremost concern of the board is to approve and enhance the teaching and learning experience of all students in the public schools of Virginia. So we will ask each member to sign that. I see uh, Dr. Geiger in the audience. He is our liaison with the State Department of Education. Thank you for coming, Dr. Geiger. You're welcome to join us if you'd like. <clears throat> Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? We've already done a lot of it, but <laughs> <laughs> Do we have such a motion? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second? Second. Motion to approve our agenda and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion <clears throat> carries. Citizens time. Do we have anyone that signed up? Yes. Carrie okay. um, Johnson. Carrie Johnson. Would you state your name and your address, please? My name is Carrie Johnson. I live at 205 Cypress Avenue in Franklin, Virginia. I don't guess I could request to speak after you talk about the item that I wanted to talk about so I could hear more information um, about what you all are bringing to the table about the advanced placement in dual enrollment courses. Because I, I wanted to, I had some questions about it, but perhaps if you already answered it, then I wouldn't need to talk about it. We're going to discuss it uh, shortly. Yes. Is that possible for me to come up and speak after you all address it? No, I think you need to make your comments now. Okay. Um, there was a parents meeting last week um, regarding the uh, dual enrollment courses at Franklin High School. And I understand that according to the policy that there are two courses allowed for juniors and two courses allowed for seniors that will be paid for by the school division. And any courses above and beyond that will fall to the parents or the families of the children, which is fine. Um, I do know that in the governing principles for the dual enrollment between Virginia's public schools and the Virginia Community College system, that the school divisions and the community colleges are supposed to provide the opportunity for students to participate in dual enrollment at little to no cost to them or their families. So I do know that in offering two courses per year um, for the juniors and seniors is giving us some sort of a break. My concern was that at this meeting, um, there was some talk about changing the way that the grades were weighted. And in reviewing the Code of Virginia and in looking at some of the neighboring school systems, I felt that if the way that the grades were weighted was changed, that our students would have a big disadvantage to some of the other um, graduating seniors that 
are graduating and going off to college. Um, in the Code of Virginia, it is mandated that advanced placement courses and IB courses are weighted um, higher than other courses, and it's because of the rigor of the course and that they are college level courses. And it does state that the dual enrollment classes, you do have an option to weight them. Um, however, because Franklin doesn't have IB classes to my knowledge, and we've all but done away with AP courses, the dual enrollment courses are really the only college level courses that our students have. So if we take away the weighting of this course, then our students don't have the opportunity for the higher level grade point average that really goes with the rigor of these. And I don't think that we're putting them on the same kind of playing field that these other neighboring school divisions have, Southampton, Isle of Wight, Suffolk. And they are getting these 5.0 grades. Um, these students that are going in and taking these harder classes, they might be struggling with this advanced math or these advanced sciences and coming out with a B when somebody in a general ed math might be getting an A. So you're going to have a student with a general led math getting a 4.0 and somebody maybe in an advanced calculus class getting a B with a 3.0 and on a transcript when we're going for um, scholarships when we have less than 100 kids in a graduating class each child is more than 1% and that class ranking and that grade point average really matters so before you all go and make any decisions I would really like for you all to look at some of the research on the benefits of the weighting of the grades and really look into what the neighboring school divisions are doing and the one the school divisions that don't weight the dual enrollment look at the advanced placement courses and the IB courses that those schools do have because we don't have those here so this is really the only push that we have for our students to kind of give them a leg up and the research shows that the dual enrollment courses do those children that go through those are more likely to continue in college and pursue a higher degree and that is exactly what our students need so for all of the students that are going through this please don't take away that one benefit that they would get from that, not just getting the college credit, but also that higher grade point average that could earn them more scholarships to continue their education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda action to approve minutes. I believe we have three sets of minutes. June 1st, June 22nd, and June allow the 11th. I'll take you, give you a chance to gather, gander at those again. The June 1st meeting was a budget meeting. June 22nd was a regular meeting and July the 11th was another work session. So we have a motion to approve the minutes as written for June 1st. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the called school board meeting held on June 1st, 2017. Thank you. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the minutes for June 1st, signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. Motion carries. June 22nd. I make a motion we approve the minutes for the regular school board meeting on June 22nd. Second. I second. Any discussion? 
All in favor of the motion to approve the minutes for June 22nd, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. And on July the 11th, a work session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the school board meeting minutes for the call school board meeting held on July the 11th, 2017. Second. Second. All in favor, any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the minutes for July the 11th, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Superintendent's report, Ms. Sterling. Thank you, Chairman Holt. Our superintendent's report will begin with our um, summer feeding program. <clears throat> Mr. Whiting will be coming up to present. Good evening, Chairman Holt, Vice Chairman Hall Leonard, board members. Um, I'm gonna bring a brief overview of the summer feeding program that we have going on within Franklin City. Um, first off, the goal of the summer program is to make sure that all of our students are fed over the summer while they may or may not be in school. Um, the students that are in school get uh, uh, two meals a day at the uh, school that's operating the summer school. Uh, they get breakfast and lunch, and any other student that wants to partake in that can also eat breakfast and lunch if, even if they're not in summer school. Um, we have a uh, partnership with, uh, with uh, Cover 3 that handles most of the, uh, the summer feeding because they have the ability to, to take food to the two different locations and, and feed students there. Um, we had about this year in our, in our school, we had about 230 students per day um, that were partaking in the uh, summer feeding program in the school itself. And, um, and the rest of it was done by Cover 3. Cover 3 provides uh, food to different locations throughout the city. Um, I think that's listed in your, um, it's listed in, in the one in, on the final slide. You have a slide? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Do you all, y'all don't have that? No. Uh oh. You don't have it either. Um, well, what are you going to do yeah, now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, actually, there's about, uh, as I remember correctly, there's about 10 locations. And, and unfortunately, I can, I can get those for you in a, in a couple of minutes if you want. But the, uh, um, I know they feed at the YMCA. They feed at Martin Luther King Center. Um, they feed at Agape. They feed at uh, the library. Um, and there were several other locations along with the high school. And all those locations are actually listed on our website so for, for the students. So if they need to find out where they can go eat, it's, it's on, our, on our school website. So even though it's not up there. <laughs> so, so. I have a question, Mr. Whiting, while we're waiting. Yes, ma'am. How long have we partnered with Cover 3 Foundation for the uh, program? For a little over five years. And they provide, uh, they also do our afternoon snacks or dinner uh, for all of the schools. And that's based on the, the, uh, what the, the members of the school want, if they, they can provide either snack or dinner. So any, they can feed any organization, any after school event, anything like that that, that the principal or, or the staff needs. And how are we getting this information out to our families? You said um, it's on the website. Are yes, ma'am. Other, other on the ways website. that you're getting mainly on the website. Yes. For those families who may not have internet access, how are we getting that information? Um, we, I mean, it's unfortunately it's sort of word of mouth. I mean, we 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 not really sent out flyers. I mean, I know Cover Three does send out flyers and those kind of things, and they've got I things posted we have around the town. Call we could possibly. Yes, I think we can use the robocall, and I think yeah. we can have it in enrollment packets when students come to school. So yes, there are multiple ways that we can support getting that communication out. Thank you. So, I guess we're not gonna get it. I'll get that information to you. <laughs> so, are there any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whiting. I'm 
Sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> Next, we'll have an update on the summer maintenance projects. <laughs> Big, so I can read it. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, but I haven't got a chance to meet all of you personally. My name is Danny Custer. I am your maintenance supervisor, and I'll be reviewing with you uh, some of our larger summer projects that we'll be doing this summer. And uh, I'll go line for line on this and. Let's start out with the roof on Charles Street Gym. Uh, we are, the start date on that's supposed to be 8th, August 7th, and uh, the completion date would be 9-29. And I, I, you don't have a copy of what the cost was, and if you want me to tell you what that is, I can. Yes, please. Okay. That's uh, $58,500. And what's included in that is uh, there is actually two roofs on Charles Street Gym, and there, that's complete tear-off, complete replacement, 20-year warranty. It's a very good roof. The next thing was the brickwork at the Charles Street gym. Prior to us putting the roof on, we had, to, well, we had to high ground do an engineering survey on it. And uh, there's a lot of brickwork that needs to be done, but they, they noted the ones that needed to be done for prior to putting the roof on so we were structurally sound on the top because we had some problems with our walls and everything up there. That has been repaired. It started on uh, July 7th. And he completed it on the 14th, and that was uh, $9,900, and that has been taken care of. The next would be the roof replacement on the girls' locker room at Franklin High School. And it was fun. all this was funded by QZEP. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. And the uh, start date on that will be 8-14, and the completion date is September 1st, and it's $19,000. And that's also Q, uh, QZEP funded. If there's any questions on any of this while I'm going through, just feel free to ask me. All right, our next line item would be uh, we clean all the carpets at all the schools. Uh, every year we do this. This is a process we do every year. We start, it's already started. It started on the 24th of July, and we plan to complete it on uh, August 3rd. And uh, the number's wrong. It's $18,000 $18, to have that all done. And they also do all our chairs, all our uh, auditoriums, chairs, any office chairs, anything like that. Okay, and then we're going to be at SP Morton. We're going to be rehabbing all the bathrooms in there. We did this about five years ago, and uh, as you know, the modulars don't take, they're not ceramic towel and ceramic floors, so they need to be have attention every, every five years or so. And then that's approximately uh, $8,000, and it's locally funded through the maintenance budget. Also, the carpet cleaning is funded through the local, our budget, maintenance budget. We're going to pressure wash all the modulars. That, we're starting that on the 26th of July, and we'll complete it on the 28th, and that's just maintenance staff. There's no cost for that. Oh, you got it now. I see you got it. Okay. The next is uh, paint and repair the walls and ceiling in the cafeteria at J.P. King. I don't know if any of you have been in there, but it needs a little bit of attention in there. Uh, we plan on starting that on the... 7 7 and completion date is uh, uh, 8 18 and that's $1,800 and that's coming out of cafeteria funds. They're paying for that. Replace the steps going to the back of the module. They've been there since the modules were originally put in there and the, uh, the main structure needs to be replaced. So when you pull all the boards off, you're going to have to replace the whole thing. So we're going to start that on uh, August 7th and uh, yeah, August 7th and should be completed by the 18th. And uh, the cost of that's $2,000, and that comes out of the maintenance budget. Paint the main hallways at Franklin High School. I don't know if you that needs some attention in there. Uh, we're going to start that on the 14th of August and complete, should be completed by the 25th, and the cost of that's $2,800. That's labor. Uh, we provide them with the paint. That's a thing I've worked out with some of our contractors. It saves us a lot of money by us buying the paint because they can't mark anything up, and we give them all that stuff, and that's a... $2,800, and that's going to also be funded through uh, the local maintenance budget. Uh, we're going to be painting the cafeteria at Franklin High School. Start date on that is the 14th and should be completed by the 25th. That's $1,800, and that's also coming out of cafeteria funds. We're going to be replacing all the ceiling tiles in the main building and the third hall 
at Franklin High School. We just, I, I spoke with the contractor today. We're just going to do the main building for the, but the price he uh, quoted me is under what we initially thought the cost was going to be. So I go ahead and add it to third hall. And it's going to be $22,000. And that's funded through QZAP money. Playground mulch at SP Morton. Now, this is a hyperallergenic non splinter mulch. And it's pretty expensive. It's, uh, we do both playgrounds. It's 200 yards of mulch. It's uh, supposed to start the 4th of August, and it should be done the 5th. That's $6,500, and that's locally funded through us. Sometimes the bright starts help split the cost with us because of one of, their, one of their playgrounds. All right. Next one is we're going to paint all the curbs. We do this every summer, paint all the curbs, all the yellow curbing, paint all at all the schools, we're going to start that on the 14th, and will be completed by the 25th, $500, local funded through the maintenance department. We're going to resurface all, all the stages at all the schools. Start that on uh, the 4th of August, and should be completed by the 6th, and that's $1,200 funded through local funding. Resurface the gym floors, which has already been done at both J.P. King and Franklin High School. That was done on uh, 16th of June. And that was $4,500 and it was funded through maintenance budget. Okay. And I guess the last one is the, the preventive maintenance. We have uh, over 600 pieces, pieces of uh, HVAC and kitchen equipment that need to be PMs done on. It makes them last a lot longer if you pay a little attention to them, clean them and new filters and belts and anything it needs. And that's usually around $500. We've already started that and we should be completed by the 5th of uh, September. And it's $500 and it's locally funded. Anybody have any questions on anything or want to discuss anything? No questions, just a comment, Mr. Yes, yes ma'am. I'd like to thank you for the adjustment to the format that you presented in this evening. Okay. Uh, very descriptive, you gave us a start date, completion date, the cost, the funding source, and you, you close right at the end with the approximate amount of the QZAP funding. Right, I didn't, I didn't say that. That's, that's seven hundred dollar will be left after mm -hmm. QZAP, and that's what we're Thank shooting you for. So much. You're welcome. Thank that's you. Excellent. Have a good evening. Dan, Thank excellent. you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Next, we have the professional development law. Professional development that took place from central office as followed. Advocacy, division, career, development and transition, and the Virginia Power School user group. <coughs> Next, I would like to move forward to SP Morton's executive summary. SP Morton has been working extremely hard with their literacy uh, framework and making certain that their instructional program is up and ready for our new school year. So at this time, I would like to bring Dr. Davis up to the front to talk about SP Morton. Good evening, everyone. As she said, um, SP Morton has been very, very busy this summer. Um, we have revamped our master schedule so that we can include more instructional time in our master schedule for reading. So we have before kindergarten through third grade, they have 120 minutes for reading. In fourth grade, 90 minutes. In fifth grade, 80 minutes for gradual release from third to fifth grade. The balanced literacy plan that we put together was done by myself as the instructional leader and our reading specialist at SP Morton. We've been working together throughout the entire summer to build this document. So it's a comprehensive guide for teachers when they walk into the classroom. It's a components, and those components tell them what they should be doing for the allotted amount of time in class. So any teacher coming in new, they can pick up that guide, and it also will include links so to YouTube videos to illustrate what they should be teaching at that time. Our reading specialists also will be providing professional development for those teachers as well when we come back for pre-service so that they get a hang of the new format because this is going to be something new that's going to take the expectations a little higher for our students. 
So what I'll do is just show you just a brief overview of what that document looks like. You gotta minimize it. And while she's picking that, pulling that back up, um, we also include in writing as a part of this plan as well, so that when they get to middle school, they'll be more fluent writers because they do take a writing test in eighth grade. So writing has been incorporated from kindergarten through fifth grade. As soon as he pull it up, I'll show you. <laughs> and while we're waiting, um, you discussed writing in kindergarten. Can you give us a little overview about the pre-K? Yes, also with pre-K, they have a program where they use, it's called Big Day Pre-K. And they also have Virginia Foundation Blocks for reading. So these two programs work collaboratively together. And they also introduce the process of writing by starting teach, uh, students out in pre-K with writing a sentence. So we're going to start them out with trying to write sentences in pre-K by you know, verbally telling the teacher and being able to write it as well. So we're starting from the babies all the way through fifth grade. So this document. Um, it's a document that we created um, for K-3, and this is kindergarten. So you will start off with phonics instruction, and you see this is highlighted because if I click on it, it's gonna take me to a YouTube video. But they have 20 minutes for phonics, and if you go down, they have seven minutes for a reading instruction, which has several components. Um, read aloud, small group, they have um, literacy stations and workstations. And if you go down to the bottom where it sees write, where you see writing, they have many lessons. Basically, students will be writing independently. Um, the teacher may give them a prompt to write on, but they're not expected to write right off the beginning. They are introduced to the process, one process at a time. So it takes them through the process, so by the end, they should be able to create a product for writing. Um, and again, that's K through, now th third grade is our one of our focus areas, of course. So in third grade, they have, it, the time decreases for phonics. So they have 15 minutes here. Reading instruction increases to 80 minutes. And then they get 25 minutes for writing. Because you gradually release them. They have more time on foundational. And when they get to third grade, it starts to just gradually release a tad bit in writing. So this is a comprehensive guide that if a teacher picked it up, they would know how much time to spend in each one of these areas. And once we get the links in there, they'll be able to click on the links and a YouTube video will come up too. And just in case they forget what the reading specialist taught them, they can pick it up and watch that video. And they are video e-videos. Okay, I'm done with this one. I didn't scroll all the way through, but the back also includes a writing rubric for each grade level and what they're supposed to do. So that also is included too. It's about 85 pages, but the back side is the writing side of it that I didn't go through. Um, we just completed the Summer Institute. Um, we did that on Monday and Tuesday of this week. Um, it involved our reading specialists, our math coach, our ITRS, and a teacher from each core level core grade level. Um, each team reviewed our data from the SOLs and looked at those students who need intensive support for the next school year. And what we did was we, ident we identified their weaknesses and we created personalized education plans for every student. We started the skeleton for the teacher and then the teacher will be monitoring that every week for those students who, have, who need intensive support. We right, now go back. Student detail performance by question. That's what the what Pearson releases for the SOLs. It tells what the students are weak on. 
Also, we developed school improvement goals for the school year and how we plan to monitor those goals. So we did a year-long plan also to monitor our goals that we have set for the school year. All right, let's go back to personalized personalized education plans is this created for each student students who were having difficulty or are you all created for every student at SP Moore for this Institute for those students who need intensive support okay. though, for this Institute gotcha. but Thank we do you. have a plan for those students who are in the middle which is our monitoring group mm -hmm. and those students who are excelling so we will be coming back with a plan for them as well and because our literacy program is new, we are having a ramp up reading retreat on August 7th and 8th, where our reading teachers will be coming in to see our new format. They'll be looking over SOL scores and PALS data as well, and they'll be, have an opportunity to look over the personalized education plans for their students. So what we will do, this will be part one, and then part two will be when teachers return. And that concludes my report. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Davis. And thank your team for the extensive amount of work that you've done, making certain that we're prepared for our students on day one. Next, we'll have JP King. Ms. Lisa Francis will come up and talk to us about her program and how she's preparing for her students to enter into JP King day one. Good evening. Um, we've been really busy at J.P. King this summer. We also, a um, little bit of ours is the same as um, Dr. Davis's because we also had our um, summer institute Monday and Tuesday. Eight of our teachers attended. And of course, we also reviewed all our data, and um, which is our student detail by question, our SDPQ. We de began developing our student school improvement goals, but we're also going to, after that, when our teachers come back for pre-service, we're going to go over it again with everyone on board. This was kind of like a pre-game to the um, beginning. We began our year-long plan after reviewing the data. We also began developing our personalized educational plans. We chose our students that did not pass the reading and math SOLs. So those were the first ones that are on our list. And then we um, dwindle down to the tiers after we get everyone back in school. And of course, eight teachers attended. And it was wonderful. It was great to see the teachers. I've missed them. It's kind of quiet without them and the students. Um, our next steps for Summer Institute, um, of course, we're going to all work together to create. We did create a personal educational plan, personalized educational plan for those students, and we began it. So when the teachers, everyone comes, these teachers will be kind of like our leaders in the building. And so they will be training our teachers on this personalized educational plan. Um, the personal education, the PEP will be reviewed weekly with team and our data meetings and our PLCs and our school goals and plan will be shared with all stakeholders during pre-service and then they're submitted to central office. We are also developing a balanced literacy framework. Um, ours is in work in progress. We are working, um, Mr. Parker, myself, our instructional specialists, some reading teachers, everybody's on board. Um, to, and of course our focus this year is truly the intensive focus is on writing. And so that's implemented in our plan. As you see here, it helps all students to learn to read and write effectively. So it starts in sixth grade and then it's going to go seventh grade and eighth grade. So and our, t our students take the test in eighth grade. Um, the balance between reading and writing allows students to receive, of course, individualized teaching appropriate to their strengths and needs and literacy, of course. And the balanced literacy has several components embedded into the framework, which of course supports our students' growth. And we, of course, I gave you some examples that are the components. And um, I do want to add that we did revise our master schedule, and we did um, also embed more minutes into our, our reading, math, and science and social studies blocks. So we redid that. So we've been busy. Any questions? Okay. Oh, Ms. Francis, one moment. <laughs> Thank you for your overview. I would also like you to touch on how you're preparing for advanced mathematics. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's, yes. Good. Um, this year, we are implementing in sixth grade um, an advanced math 
class with our sixth graders, and our sixth graders will be advancing and they will take pre-algebra. So we have, right now, we are sitting at 24, that might be 22 because of some, we, you know, our data, looking at our data, but it is gonna be a nice class, they'll take pre-algebra. So then next year, those sixth graders will be seventh graders and they'll take algebra one, and then the following year, we'll have them take geometry. So we'll be implementing that, the geometry. So our students will be ready when they go to Franklin High School in math, and so we are very excited about that. So we've been working hard on that as well. Thank you. Okay. Excellent, thank you so much. You. Next we'll hear from Franklin High School and their summer school program. Mr. Phelps? Good evening, board. Um, Franklin High School, just like the other two schools, have been, has been extremely busy this summer. We graduated on June the 16th and welcomed students back on Monday, June the 26th. And we've been um, rolling with 161 students strong all summer, um, off, off and on with that 161 number because as students pass their SOLs, some have left us and some have stayed with us, still persevering, trying to pass on a retake. So. Um, as you look at our presentation here, I haven't had my summer institute yet. We will, um, because a lot of our teachers are our, our teachers are our summer school staff. So it's been impossible so far to pull them away from their classes to um, take a deep dive on the data. But we have been using data in summer school, um, our SDBQ data, as, as we go along. We have two types of summer school at Franklin High School. The slide that we're looking at now is called SOL Academy. And these are students who have passed the class. Uh, for example, they, have may, they may have passed biology, the course, or algebra one, the course, but they have not passed the SOL test that goes along with the course to get a verified credit. And you have to have a certain amount of verified credits to graduate. So students who are in SOL Academy, they attend four days of intense remediation summer school and teachers are definitely using their SDBQ, their student detail by question data to drive the instruction because we don't want just to do a shotgun approach where everyone gets the same thing regardless of your strengths and weaknesses. So um, we did have a work day prior to students coming in and we had a plan for each individual student before they came back on June 26th. Um, SOL Academy is from 845 to 315 each day, which is a six hour instructional day because there's th 30 minutes for lunch built in there. Um, and then at the last day of the week, which is Thursday for us in the summer, they take the SOL test. And if they pass, they have a verified credit and they either go home for the summer or they come back for the next SOL Academy for a different subject. So it just depends on what their situation is, how long they spend their summer with us. On the next slide, you see the SOL Academy results for 2017 because I want everyone to realize that your money is being put to good use. We do have some results coming out of SOL Academy. SOL Academy is done. Um, right now, what we're still working with is what we call four credit summer school, and we'll get to that in a minute. But in SOL Academy, we had 25 math students pass an SOL test this summer and it's 25 out of 25 because in the summertime, the scores only help us. If a student fails, they don't count against us because they've already hit us once during the regular school year. All these students are retesters. So 25 out of 25 gives us a nice cushion to start the, um, the new school year. And as you may know, math is our struggle at Franklin High School, even though we're happy with where we ended up. It was the one that kept us up at night all summer, so I mean all school year. Science, we had two students pass, earth science and biology. Um, don't feel like we didn't do a good job in summer school with, the, with science. It, we just didn't have as many science students in SOL Academy because most of them passed during the regular school year. But we did get two more um, during the summer. History, we had nine students pass. English, we had none, but that's actually a good thing because every one of our English students passed the reading and writing end of course test during the regular school year or they graduated. I, I don't wanna say we had a 100% pass rate, but some of them passed on a substitute test and, um, and they moved on. So we didn't have any English for SOL Academy. 
We had a total of um, 36 verified credits earned this summer out of 56 students who attended. I'm very proud of that because these are some of our students who um, had the most struggle during the school year. So that's a pretty good percentage for, um, for the ones who didn't pass during the regular school year. All right, four credit summer school is a totally different type of summer school. I, sometimes I feel like we need to come up with a better name for it than that, but it, it, that's how it started. And these students are taking a class for credit. They're trying to get a standard credit to count towards one of those 22 or 26 for an advanced diploma that you have to have for graduation. Um, they have to attend at least 140 hours of seat time. And we do track that um, to the minutes. They can only miss two days the entire summer uh, because we've built in 154 instructional hours. Each day is seven hours. So they can miss two days and still have 140 hours. But once they miss more than two, um, we politely tell them that we'll see them on September the 5th because um, we can't award them a credit. It's Monday through Thursday, July 10th through August the 15th, and we have a very dedicated group that is hanging. We started with 135 on the first day, and we're hanging on to 105 as of today. I'm very proud of those students for hanging in there with us. And we do, the, uh, we do nine SOL classes in four credit summer school because, quite honestly, I don't want to depend on a new SOL score for a new student in a new class during a condensed schedule. So we do nine SOL classes. Um, such as English 9, 10, 12, Health and PE 9 and 10, Ecology, Government, I know I'm going to forget one. Um, I think I got all of them. And what that does for us, it reduces our class size, class sizes during the regular school year. It opens up their schedule for, um, I hate to use the word dual enrollment right now, but dual enrollment and other electives, it opens up their schedules and it also helps teachers with their regular class load, we can have more sections, for example, of biology and earth science because we get some of the ecology out of the way during the summertime, and that makes our class sizes smaller in SOL classes. So four credit summer school helps us, helps us in a lot of ways. Right now we have, like I said, 105. We expect to have two summer graduates out of um, summer school. I'm very proud of that. We hope you can come to our graduation. Um, exercise ceremony, which we try to make just as special as the one we do in June. It will be on August 17th at 10 a.m. And we might actually have three graduates, but two I can feel pretty confident on right now. Um, and our GCI, grad, your, your, our graduation completion index has to be 85. Um, we're expecting around 87 right now for our graduation rate. None of that is set in stone, but the reason I put that is because four credit summer school over the years since we started in 2011 has really helped our graduation rate. And for some of you that have followed the history of Franklin High School, that was a struggle of ours at one time before 2014, graduation rates and math. On the last slide, um, I have a handout that I'll give to you afterwards that gives you more information on four credit summer school. All of our teachers are fully licensed that teach for credit summer school and SOL Academy and they're teaching in their subject area. And um, one of the reasons that FHS has been fully accredited for four consecutive years, I believe, is our, is our summer school program. Um, so we, continue, we appreciate the continued support. Are there any questions for me on Franklin High School summer school? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. amazing job, amazing benefits. Okay. Next, we have the principal's monthly report that was submitted for July 2017. All submitted, also submitted for your review. Are there any questions first? Also submitted for your review is a memorandum of understanding. The monthly overview is from June 17th to July 21st. All areas that we report on is curriculum alignment. Also for your review. Excuse me, Ms. Sterling. Yes. Michael. 
Can you? Yes, it is. Maybe the lean in or push Maybe lean in. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Human resource management. Also for your review is the update on leadership and government. Governance, excuse me. At this time, that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Sterling. Okay. Item 5.1, second reading, VSBA policy updates. Uh, we've seen this before. There are 117 pages. We thought it best if board members ask specific questions if they have any. So I'll open that for questions. Questions about the second reading of the VSBA policy update? Do I have a motion to approve? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, are we approving each one individually or all together? How do you want? What's your pleasure? We're approving the entire packet. Okay. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the VSBA policy updates presented as of May 2017. Is there a second? I second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the second reading of the VSBA policy update signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Franklin High School fee schedule. Chairman Holt, may I interrupt for just a second, please? In my report, there was one area that I did miss, and that was the dual enrollment update. Um, with your permission, can we backtrack to that, or shall we wait? Go ahead. Thank you so much. The dual enrollment update will be taken care of by Mr. Kelvin Edwards and Ms. Kelly Conaway.